Hi, my name is Ali Shersava from Breacher Digital and over the next few minutes I'm going to talk to you about Bode plots, a stability criteria and how to look at the Bode plot in order to assess the stability of a power supply. Most power supplies are analyzed in frequency domain. By that what I mean is that we inject a small sinusoid into our power supply and in order to do that we take the PWM and we just wiggle it a little bit with a sine wave. The action of wiggling this PWM edge by a small amount, let's say at 10 hertz, at a small frequency, is in, what it's actually doing is injecting a sine wave into our system. So what will happen next is that this sine wave will go through our system and we look at how the shape of this sine wave is modified by the time it gets out of my system. So let's imagine that we start by injecting a 10 hertz sine wave into the power supply. I start with a 10 hertz sine wave like so. For simplicity, let's say that the height of this is 1 volts. It never is. It's usually much, much smaller. And I look at how this is modified and it, when it comes out of my system. Let's say when I measure the sine wave that comes out, it has got a height of 2 volts. Then I have a gain of 2. And of course, in dB world, that would be 20 log of 2. And I can plot that on my gain plot at 10 hertz on a point over here. And that will be the first point of my Bode plot. Then, many times, when you, look, when you inject the sine wave, by the time that it comes out, not only it has changed in size, but there is also a phase shift. So let's say that the sine wave that comes out is twice the height, so I have got a gain of 2. But it's also phase shifted by a certain amount. And that gives me a phase at 10 hertz. So I can plot that on my phase plot. So I start keeping injecting these sine waves at 10 hertz, 20 hertz, 30 hertz, 40 hertz, and I plot the gain and the phase, gain and the phase, gain and the phase, all the way up to half the switching frequency. And the only reason that I'm doing this is because by the time I have finished, I have got a body plot of my power supply, and that tells me a lot about the stability of my power supply. So when I have completed measuring, my, my body plot, what do I look at on the body plot in order to assess the stability? We need to define a few terms in order to do that. If you look at this gain curve that I have got, at some point it will cross the 0 dB axis. Now what does it mean by 0 dB? Well, when the gain is 1, i.e. when the sine of the sine wave that I've injected is exactly the same size that it comes out, I've got a gain of 1, and in dB world, that is 0 dB. My gain is crossing over the 0 dB axis, and that is called the crossover frequency. So this point here is called the crossover frequency. The crossover frequency is a measure of how fast the transient response of the power supply is going to be. Now, when I have got my crossover frequency, I can draw a straight line from my gain plot down to my phase plot, and I look at how much the phase is above 180 degrees. In my case, it happens to be 130 degrees, of phase, which means that I am 50 degrees above the 180 degree point, and that is called the phase margin. And phase margin is very, very important when assessing the relative stability of the power supply. Then I will need to look at something else. As my gain, as my phase, I'm sorry, deteriorates, at some point it hits the 180 degree point. At this point, I draw a line back up to my gain plot and I see how much below the 0 dB axis it is. So the amount that is below the 0 dB axis is called the gain margin and of course that again is a measure of the relative stability of my power supply. So this point here I call the gain margin. 
So we have defined three terms. The crossover frequency, which is a measure of how fast the transient response is going to be. The phase margin, how much my phase is above 180 degrees when the gain crosses the zero dB axis, and that is a measure of relative stability. And the gain margin, where we draw a line from when the phase hits 180 degrees to see how much the gain is below the zero dB point. And again, that is a measure of my stability. There is one more point that I need to look at on a body plot to assess the stability, and it's the slope at which this gain plot crosses the zero dB axis. Ideally, you do not want to, to, to cross sharp, you want to cross shallow. And the slope of this ideally should be around minus 20 dBs. Oh, I'm sorry. I think I will change this. This is crossover. Minus 20 dBs per decade. So in total, I have defined four things that I want to look at on a body plot in order to assess the stability. The crossover frequency, the phase margin, which is defined at the crossover frequency, the gain margin, which is defined when the phase hits 180 degrees, and the slope at which the gain crosses the zero dB axis. And armed with these, I can come up with the stability criteria for the power supply. So, in order to have a nice, stable power supply, what ideally we would like is a crossover frequency, which is between one-tenth and one-eighth of the switching frequency, a phase margin, which should be better than 45 degrees, a gain margin of better than 10 dBs, and the slope of the gain plot at crossover frequency should be around minus 20 dB per decade. Thank you very much for listening. In the next video, we're going to do a real live measurement of the body plot of a power supply, and I'll show you all of these terms in real. Thank you very much.